Hi, my name is Sharon Chen. This video is about other mycobacteria, including non-tuberculous mycobacteria and mycobacteria leprae. The learning objectives are to describe the nature of the organisms that are labeled as non-tuberculous mycobacteria, or NTM, to contrast important features of NTM versus mycobacteria tuberculosis, recognize the main clinical manifestations of MTM infection and their relation to the immune status of the host, to describe proper diagnosis of NTM infection, to recognize the unique microbiological and clinical characteristics of M. leprae, and to recognize some of the clinical manifestations of leprosy. I'm going to first discuss non-tuberculous mycobacteria, or NTMs. They are free-living saprophytes. They are ubiquitous in the environment, inhabiting water, soil, and aerosols. Some can infect animals, as you can see in the box. You will sometimes hear them referred to as atypical mycobacteria because they are not typical mycobacterium tuberculosis. Although NTMs are mostly environmental microbes, some NTMs have the capacity to infect humans as opportunistic pathogens. Most of the serious infections are in the setting of an immune-compromised host. Clinically, NTMs are grouped into rapid growers and slow growers. Rapid growers produce visible colonies on culture plates around seven days. Slow growers take longer than seven days. I gave you specific species examples for each group for future reference. This is not an exhaustive list, and so I hope you get the picture that there are many NTM species. One of the more important NTMs is Mycobacterium avium complex, also referred to as MAC, listed as the first slow grower. To help you learn about NTMs, I'm going to compare and contrast NTMs to MTB, which you now know well. There are several major differences. One of the biggest differences is that NTM infections are not contagious. A person is infected by a non-tuberculous mycobacteria by exposure to the environment. In contrast, MTB is contagious. You become infected with MTB by exposure to another infected person. Another difference is that NTMs are opportunistic pathogens, not a primary pathogen like MTB. Most people infected with NTMs have some underlying predisposition. A third important difference is that NTMs don't have a latent infection phase like MTB. There are some similarities between NTM and MTB. Both are indolent, slowly progressive diseases and diseases worse in a severely immunocompromised host. The three main clinical manifestations seen with NTM infections in immunocompetent people are as follows, cervical lymphadenitis, pulmonary infections, and skin and soft tissue infections. A very important but less common clinical manifestation is disseminated disease in HIV AIDS patients. I will go into details in the next several slides. Of note, NTM can potentially infect any organ just like MTB. NTM commonly infects the cervical lymph nodes and is especially seen in young children one to five years of age. Entry of NTM is through the oral mucosa and then to local lymph nodes. The infected nodes tend to be unilateral in distribution, not painful, and the child typically does not have a fever. The node enlarges slowly and sometimes color changes to the overlying skin can be seen, a slight redness or a violet hue as you can see in the photos. On palpation, they can be fluctuant but typically are firm. Mycobacterium avium complex, or MAC, is the most causative NTM for lymphadenitis. Pulmonary disease from NTMs can occur in people who are immunocompetent and immunocompromised. Immunocompetent people with pulmonary NTM have some risk factor predisposing them to infection. Many older adult males have some underlying disease. For example, they may have bronchiectasis, which means that the airways are flabby and scarred from damage, and they can't clear secretions well. On chest imaging, consolidation with cavitary lesions can be seen that resemble tuberculosis disease. You can see an example of this in the top chest CT scan. Sometimes nodules and smaller cavities occur as seen in the bottom CT scan. Older adult females can present with pulmonary NTM similar to this nodular pattern. In contrast to the men, these women typically have no underlying disease. As I mentioned, pulmonary NTM can also occur in immunocompromised patients. Some have a relative deficiency like cystic fibrosis. These patients can also have predisposing structural lung problems like bronchiectasis. Some are severely immune compromised like patients with stem cell or organ transplant. The two most common NTMs causing pulmonary disease are MAC and M. consasii. NTMs can also cause skin and soft tissue infections, and the mechanism of this infection is typically via local trauma. The clinical manifestations are usually papules and ulcers that are chronic in nature. 
Sometimes these lesions may be associated with local lymphangitis or lymphadenitis. Several different NTMs can cause skin and soft tissue infections. I'm going to give you examples of specific NTMs and their associated environmental setting of infection. For example, Mycobacterium marinum is a common cause of skin infection in people who take care of fish aquariums. Minor trauma to the hand can cause a so-called fish tank granuloma, and you can see a picture of the skin lesion in the top photo of the hand. Several of the rapid growers, M. abscessus, fortuitum, and chelonia, can cause infections in a wide range of settings where minor trauma occurs. Skin and soft tissue infections have occurred from contaminated surgical, surgical equipment used for cosmetic surgeries, from contaminated water in nail salon foot baths, and even from application of tattoos. In the image, you can see overlying the tattoo multiple red punctate skin lesions showing you where the needle was injected. Mycobacterium ulcerans causes a skin infection predominantly in sub-Saharan Africa, typically with water exposure. M. ulcerans produces a toxin that causes skin breakdown and local immune suppression. Without proper treatment, it can cause a severe chronic skin infection called Brulee's ulcer. Previously, I mentioned that Mycobacterium avium complex, or MAC, is one of the most important NTMs to remember. MAC is a causative agent for a severe disseminated disease seen in patients with advanced AIDS who have CD4 counts of less than 50 cells per cubic millimeter. The signs and symptoms relate to the locations of dissemination. For example, fever, weight loss, night sweats, and malaise result from bacteremia. They have cough from pulmonary infection and diarrhea from infection of the gastrointestinal tract. Prior to the development of antiretroviral inf medications, MAC infection caused many deaths in people with advanced AIDS. To prevent this infection, HIV-infected patients are given prophylaxis when their CD4 count is less than 50 cells per cubic millimeter. The important point about diagnosis of MTM is that you need to get a culture. There are no other useful diagnostic tests. Treatment is varied, so susceptibility drug testing is important, which can only be done with isolation of the mycobacteria. For example, this woman received cosmetic laser treatment and developed these red papules that you can see in the picture. She was treated for many bacteria and virus infections prior to a skin biopsy. And here you can see the results of this biopsy, which shows a microabscess with positive AFB stain of bacteria. The culture eventually grew M. abscesses and required multiple drug therapy for many months. The important concept about treatment is that multiple antibiotics need to be used that are active for different targets. The medications used for MTM infections are typically not the same as used for MTB. But similar to MTB, treatment can be months long. Sometimes surgical excision is necessary. I'm going to discuss M. leprae next. M. leprae is the causative agent of leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease. This is an ancient infection dating to biblical times. Like MTB and other mycobacteria, M. leprae can survive in macrophages. There are some unique features about M. leprae. It can also infect Schwann cells of peripheral nerves. It cannot be grown in culture, and it can only be identified by AFB stains of tissue by molecular techniques or by inoculation into mouse foot pads or the nine-banded armadillo. If you thought MTB took a long time to grow, M. leprae takes even longer. The estimated doubling time is 11 to 13 days compared to MTB, which divides every 20 hours in vitro. Where did M. leprae come from? It is thought that M. leprae infected early hominids millions of years ago. And as you can see, it's closer to NTMs like M. ulcerans or M. marinum than to MTB. Now, M. leprae can only live in humans, and we are the main reservoir. However, armadillos were incidentally infected by humans, and now they can potentially transmit the infection back to humans. M. leprae is so well adapted to its unique niche in the human that it has lost a lot of its genes. It has less than half of the genes found in MTB, and about 40% of the genes in, M the, in the M. leprae genome have been inactivated. Leprosy is becoming more uncommon worldwide. Most of the cases are concentrated in three countries, India, Brazil, and Indonesia. Leprosy is a chronic insidious infection that causes more morbidity than death. It has a very long incubation period of about two to five years. The skin and peripheral nerves are affected. Skin lesions may appear in cooler areas of the body, like the extremities. 
Peripheral sensory nerve damage is the major cause of morbidity. Schwann cell infection and inflammation lead to the nerve damage. As you can see in the picture, the hand is very deformed from chronic ulnar and median nerve damage, which also leads to the muscle wasting. If you look closely, you can see the tip of the fourth finger has a burn that the patient could not feel.